So this is just some random blocking. All this stuff is to try to block it in. So within, say, I think right now in real time, this paint, this has been sped up, obviously. But in real time, we're probably only, oh, I say about 40 minutes in, right? So within 40 minutes, we have something that's blocked out, that's ready to go to the next stage. So then in the afternoon or whatever, if you're in a, in a job position, you could then uh, stress-free work on this painting, right? Because you know where you're going to head it instead of uh, spending a few hours still guessing what the painting might look like. These textures are quite random. Again, showing students just how to lay these in, how to use the skew tool. Right. I'm showing these to our first term students, so it's, uh, it, we can't go too advanced with a lot of this kind of stuff. Right. But this is quite interesting, zebra. Uh, but zebra uh, pattern is quite, na nature has the coolest patterns because it's chaos, but then it's also controlled, right? Like uh, camouflage on a zebra, technically it's random, but yet it's not. It has a nice flow to it. You can see the big stripe to small stripe, it's great. So you could use that in your designs. Uh, which you see me using here, right, kind of creating some just natural um, uh, forms. Right. The light in this case is coming from the left. It's not super prominent in, in the shot like this, but the, we try to keep it so it's majority of the light, the highlights at least, is coming from the uh, uh, left side. Did I say right? I think it's left side. Okay, so I copy that a few times, right? Preparing everything. Again, blur your eyes when you check this. Just step back from the screen. Uh, if you're watching this full screen, just step back of about a feet or so, uh, and then just blur your eye, and then use that to check your form. See if the major shapes and everything is reading. And right now, uh, I think the top of this building thing is uh, not bad. It's merging in. So now we got just a balance of tower, which I think I'm about to do here. The base of this tower is quite dark, the one I'm working on right now. So we need to adjust that so that the value level matches. Okay, so here I'm adjusting the overall value, and you can see right there knocking in some fog to get rid of that darkness that we I was talking about just a minute ago. This red, I tried to work it in, but at the end I don't think I found a nice place to put it. So I just want to bring some color in there, but red at that distance actually will not read, uh, because red is one of those uh, wavelengths that's quite quite weak in terms of uh, reaching your eye. So for example, if you look at a red building that's a couple kilometers away, it's not very red at all, it'll turn pretty great, because the wavelength um, it doesn't travel too far, versus for example, blue travels very, very far. So a blue building, even at a lo uh, very long distance, still appears relatively blue. Uh, same reason why sky and ocean, all those kind of things are blue. Right? It's a wavelength itself uh, could penetrate a lot further than red and yellows and oranges. So by putting red on the building and making it too red, it'll actually look fake. Right? So here you can see all the layers are collapsed. I got rid of it all. So this way we can keep the file nice and fast and keep it a uh, little bit less memory intensive. And now I'm just showing students how you can use the color balance tool, which is a very, very good uh, layer adjuster for me because the color balance doesn't mess with value. It doesn't screw up your uh, the, the lighting and the darkness that you established. So you could then change the color all you want without really worrying if the painting will read or not. So it's one of those things that uh, I used quite often in my work. So that way you could just paint, paint away, even the color you don't like it, you can always adjust it with the color balance. It's one of those digital tools that's just so critical in today's uh, production. So now I'm starting to go back and paint some details, try to link all this stuff up so it's not so uh, messy. Right? And also trying to match density, get rid of some of the photo, uh, you can see there's some texture lines there. Right? Just, just trying to merge the textures I threw in there from earlier into the painting itself. So the, the, the separation between photograph versus Photoshop paint is a little bit less uh, seen. Right, so like for example, those zebra patterns are now going in and repeating those patterns uh, using Photoshop brush versus the texture itself. So yeah, um, let's go talk about some administrative stuff. So if you guys have suggestions for some basics, uh, I have seen some suggestions already, so we'll try to address that. But keep in mind though, some stuff uh, probably will not show up in Design Cinema because again, I run a school here and we have paid students. Uh, so we cannot basically give away everything that we teach uh, onto YouTube because otherwise uh, these students will feel pretty cheated, right? So the things I generally don't cover on uh, Design Cinema are the fundamentals. Those are things I think um, what my school is value for because I really think fundamentals is the building block of everything. Uh, no matter what field you're going to go into from industrial design to character design to whatever, fundamentals is the key. And fundamentals also take a 
long time to learn. It's something that in a video is very, very hard to cover. Like the subject of perspective uh, for here us is a, is a 14 week course, you know, just on perspective only. So uh, then you talk about anatomy and color and lighting. All those things are each um, take about 14 weeks. So to cover it in a single video on YouTube is nearly impossible. You could get a very slight hint of it, but to learn anything from it is quite difficult because perspective especially is kind of like math. It's very, very complex, especially in the beginning. And without an instructor sitting next to you and kind of explaining stuff uh, when you have questions, it's very, very hard to learn on your own. It's, uh, it's, it's like one of those things, kind of like learn physics on your own. You could try it, but it's really, really hard. You have to really concentrate. So um, same thing with the fundamentals, the lighting, composition, value. So all those things, uh, I, touch, I touch those subjects here and there on these videos, that's for sure, but not in depth. Uh, and also, I think it would be quite boring. I think the number of views for, for something like Hardcore Perspective is probably going to be super low because what you see on screen is going to look like math formulas. It's look like some kind of programming um, diagram or something like that right and that's how, how those things are work it's not as sexy as for example um, doing anatomy which at least the, the most people understand anatomy because you see human parts you see muscles but perspective is actually quite dry of a subject matter um, but in any case um, Hopefully these videos are helping you guys, you know, but the fundamental stuff I do tend to avoid on purpose uh, because we, we utilize those for our full-time uh, enrolled students. Um, but something else I want to cover as well in the f near coming up future, which is uh, probably some traditional medium stuff, drawing on paper, uh, and we'll film those versus doing on a digital. So I think those are quite nice because I think it's a, it's a technique that's very useful to draw on paper to uh, make your hands get used to the, to the uh, I guess, the movements of drawing. And so I'll show you guys a couple of techniques, kind of like the stuff I did for Noman uh, way, way back, uh, showing you guys just some warm-up exercises you could do on paper. So we'll be filming those uh, in the upcoming weeks or so. Okay. So let's go back to this one. So anyways, yeah, a lot of stuff planned for the uh, design cinema stuff. I definitely want to keep that going. I think it's really good to reach a lot of you guys out there who cannot come to a school and but is interested in this field. Because uh, my goal here is not, uh, you know, trying to use this as a, a way to sell you on a school or anything like that. All it is is trying to promote our industry, you know, to, to show you guys that our business is quite fun, that this is a real job. This is a career for a lot of us. Um, and it's a very, very fun career. Um, you know, just yesterday I was working on a, on a video game as well as a film stuff. And you just sit there and think you know this is one of the weirdest job on the world because you know you make a very good living doing this at the same time you're being paid to to for example draw aliens and draw draw spaceships and stuff like that it's it's like a kid's dream right sort of but then you actually make it into a career uh, unfortunately so many people out there don't know what this industry is about especially like parents and those kind of uh, you know my parents have no idea what, what I really do for a living so this is for the young kids out there who are interested in this field and you guys can see a little bit behind the scenes of the kind of skills and the uh, techniques that go into this business um, and hopefully some of you guys will pursue a career like this because the more of you guys are in this field, the better it is for our industry, right? It's, it's very, very hidden. So that's what these, the purpose of these tutorials are. So anyways, let's go back to this painting. So we're adding a couple more uh, smokestacks. So just random stuff. Each This is to show uh, students some, some of the brushes I have for making smoke. And also it helps kind of build mood. You know, this place is kind of like, uh, you know, the aliens have taken over. So it's not, it's not Earth, right? I'm trying to create like Earth is sort of below them now. Uh, and these guys are pretty much assimilated right on top of all the, um, all the buildings in Hollywood, basically. All right, so create a kind of a, you know, the typical slave uh, labor camp below it or something like that. And then all the human beings are, are, are enslaved to work for the alien race. You know, the very, very video game type of uh, story point there. So this smoke right now is too strong. I'll probably knock these back in terms of the, their values. Right. And they're painted on a layer, so we could change the color if we wanted to. So I'm painting the base to have just a slight color. And devalue those down so they're not so super saturated. Right. The direction of the wind is quite important. I want the composition to read from left to right. So I make the wind blow up the wind in the same direction. Uh, versus if I put it opposite, it looks kind of awkward. So that, that perspective grid is something I never get rid of. Uh, it's always in there. So here I'm trying to do a spaceship, but the end of the, uh, at the end of it, I actually deleted it. It didn't feel right. I had nowhere to put it. Um, I wanted to put some just some random ships flying into the scene, but it just uh, compositionally was uh, fighting a lot of forms. There are already a lot of vertical shapes in here, and there's a big horizon shape, I mean, horizontal shape in the background. So by putting that little spaceship, it's just too much, too busy. So uh, one of those things where you paint it, your gut is just telling you it's not going to work. And for me, I, I tend to trust my gut feelings a lot when it comes to uh, design. So if, if something doesn't feel right, it, it's probably not correct. So that spaceship, even though it's, um, you know, we spent a little bit of time drawing it, if it didn't feel right, just delete it. 
right? Versus trying to make it work, trying to make it work, but the whole time it bugs you. You know, so you could spend 45 minutes trying to make something work, but you knew even from the first minute you put it in, that's probably not going to work. So in, in this case, from just from experience, I tend to just delete them and uh, move on to something else. So here I'm redrawing the alien guy I was uh, doing earlier just to um, give him some scale. So that way we know how big uh, or how far we are from something right? by having a human scale. So very quickly marked in. So this this um, demo is almost coming to an end here. So hopefully you guys enjoy it and uh, you know we're all back in full operation again. Um, and yeah, looking forward to next week's stuff where we go back to the basics. And I'm really looking forward to some of the filming stuff I want to do to just show you guys how to get sketchbooks, uh, you know what pens to use, uh, what kind of subject matters you could do, uh, drawing objects from real life, uh, maybe even some anatomy stuff. We do some life drawing and how that could help, uh, especially in, in terms of industrial design. Anatomy and figure drawing is very, very important important because everything exists in nature so anatomy not not just on, on human beings but animals right so maybe we'll take the video camera down to the zoo or something like that and film a couple of animals and then we reverse engineer the anatomy so until then hopefully you guys enjoy this and if you guys have questions uh, whatever comments uh, go to our youtube uh, section and leave it there so until then uh, hope you guys enjoy this and i will um, see you guys next week right with a new video okay talk to you guys soon bye bye